Chapter 63 Tony Stark finally had a day to himself. After weeks of relentless paparazzi hounding his every move, the reprieve felt like a breath of fresh air. He descended into his workshop, a sanctuary where he could escape the clamor of the outside world and immerse himself in what he loved most, engineering. God, those vultures are relentless, Tony muttered to himself as he navigated through the myriad of tools and parts scattered around his workbench. You'd think they'd have better things to do than follow me around 24-7, and if it wasn't them, then it was the board hounding me to sell the armor bunch of leeches. He picked up a wrench and began working on his armor, feeling the familiar comfort of the task as his stress washed away. The whirring of machinery and the hum of Jarvis in the background created a calming symphony. As he tightened bolts and recalibrated circuits, Tony let his mind drift, his fingers moving almost automatically. His attention was soon drawn to a set of schematics on his hologram, the upgrades he and Cole Dagon had been working on together. Tony couldn't help but smile as he reviewed the improvements. Cole's insights had been invaluable. Shielding tech was something he hadn't thought of, but now that it's in front of him, he was sure to do more research into it. Kid's got some serious talent, Tony mused, his smile widening as he added the final touches to the designs. With a few more tweaks, the upgrades were complete and ready for production. As he leaned back and admired their work, Tony's thoughts turned to call. The young inventor had been a tremendous help, offering not only his expertise, but also gifting Tony with shield technology. I can't accept that for nothing, Tony said to himself, the thought gnawing at his conscience. Call had earned his respect, and Tony wanted to repay the favor in a meaningful way. His gaze shifted to his old arc reactor, now a relic but once the core of his survival and success. If he can figure out this tech, then he deserves it, Tony decided. The arc reactor was more than just a power source, it was a symbol of innovation and resilience, qualities he saw in Call. With newfound determination, Tony carefully packed the arc reactor into a secure case. He included a note detailing the significance of the reactor and expressing his gratitude for Cole's help, and also wrote a couple of quips he knew the kid would enjoy. Jarvis, Tony called out, make sure this gets delivered to Cole Dagon. No delays. Of course, sir. I'll ensure it reaches him promptly. As Tony sealed the package, he felt a sense of satisfaction. It wasn't just about repaying a debt. It was about recognizing potential and fostering the kind of creativity that had always driven him. If that kid can really figure out my arc reactor tech, then I wonder what sort of thing he'll make with it. Tony said with a hint of excitement, Well, whatever it is, I'll just surpass him. There's no way I'll let someone do better than me in my own field. With that said, he went back to work. General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross sat at the head of the table, his steely gaze sweeping over the assembled officers and defense contractors. The room was tense, the air heavy with unspoken frustrations and ambitions. On the table in front of him was a dossier marked with the name Tony Stark. Ross cleared his throat and began, Gentlemen, the times are changing and they are changing fast. We have a new variable to consider in our ongoing efforts to secure advanced technology for national defense. The room remained silent, the gravity of the situation hanging over them. Ross continued, Stark's most recent invention is of particular interest. His advanced armor is nothing short of a one-man army. We've all already seen it in action from the few recordings we were able to intercept, and it's imperative that we gain this technology. Imagine an army of iron soldiers if we can do that, then no other nation on this earth could possibly think or hope to ever match the U.S. again. Colonel James Doss leaned forward. General, we've already tried dealing with Tony Stark to acquire the Iron Man armor. He's been resistant, to say the least. He's become a pacifist, focusing on humanitarian efforts rather than military applications. He's rejected every approach we've made. Ross nodded, a hint of annoyance flashing in his eyes. I'm well aware of Stark's stance. His refusal to cooperate has been a significant obstacle, but don't forget that he's not the only one capable of making iron soldiers. Ross said with a dramatic pause before pushing forward a new folder with the name Cole Dagon. Dagon presents us with a new opportunity. He isn't burdened by the same moral quandaries as Stark. 
his technology, particularly the scouts, is just as good, and if not better, the iron armor. It doesn't even waste lives. This technology is being wasted in police hands. It belongs with the military, where it can be used for the good of the people. Hearing Ross's passionate statement caused many heads to nod as they completely agreed with the man. While some simply nodded, hoping that this chance would give them the opportunity to take the technology for themselves. One of the defense contractors, a man named Simmons, spoke up. General, we've been monitoring Dagon's activities. He's not as high profile as Stark, but he's equally ingenious. The scouts are just the tip of the iceberg. If we could bring him into the fold, we could revolutionize our military capabilities. Ross leaned back in his chair, considering Simmons' words. Dagon's technology has incredible potential, and we need to ensure it's used for the right purposes. The police and local authorities don't have the resources or the vision to fully utilize what Dagon has created. We do. Doss nodded in agreement. We've seen what happens when this kind of technology isn't properly controlled. Smart. The chaos and destruction during the Ironmonger incident were a wake-up call. Times are changing, men, and I for one don't want to be left behind. Ross stood up, his presence commanding the room's attention. We need to approach Dagon carefully. He's not Stark, but he's still likely to be wary of government intervention. We need to make him see that his inventions can serve a greater purpose. We can offer him resources, funding, and the chance to make a real impact on a global scale. The room murmured in agreement, the plan beginning to take shape. Ross continued, and if he refuses, we have other ways of securing his cooperation. National security is at stake. We can't afford to let this opportunity slip through our fingers, but first I'll meet with him and see if things can be done amicably. As the meeting adjourned, the officers and contractors filed out, each with their own thoughts on the coming negotiations. General Ross lingered for a moment, staring at the dossier in front of him. Call Dagon was a new player in a game of immense stakes, and Ross was determined to bring him into the fold, one way or another. The future of military technology hung in the balance, and Ross knew that securing Dagon's cooperation could be the key to maintaining their edge. The scouts, with their advanced capabilities, were just the beginning. With Dagon's genius and the government's resources, the possibilities were endless. Ross was willing to do whatever it took to make sure those possibilities became a reality, and if it all somehow fails, then it was only a small loss. He wasn't a man to put all his eggs in one basket after all, and had other projects under the works. Two in particular came to his mind. A new super soldier serum his scientists had created, which was weaker but it was still a significant leap, and lastly a gamma radiation project his daughter was working on. Yes, we will not be left behind.